Hi guys, I hope you're having a beautiful day. I am here with Erin Riley today. She's a practitioner of divine empowerment energy healing, as well as cellular regeneration. Am I saying all that right, Erin? Yes. <laughs> okay, heard. Perfect. So Erin's um, actually a practitioner I've worked with before, and I am 100% behind her work and the confidence she has in this ability to move through energy healing and energy work and communicate it as well. So how are you doing today? Hey, Aaron. <laughs> I'm doing great. Thanks, Taylor. Yeah, of course. Thanks for being here. So my first question is because for me, we have a lot of processes and energy work and healing that we've all kind of known the names of. And mm -hmm. for me, I didn't know anything about um, cellular regeneration or the energy healing work you do. So I know you've had a lot of steps to get here, um, but I'm just curious about the work you do now. Can you tell me a little bit about the divine empowerment and uh, cellular regeneration? Sure. Yeah. Um, it was actually fairly new to me, too. Um, yeah, I don't think it's very uh, widespread, the the knowledge of this technique. Um, in fact, there's probably less than 100 people who have actually even taken any sort of um, classes to learn this for themselves, much less the practitioners all around the world. I mean, there's probably... Well, I know at the, the the highest level, which is includes the energetic cellular regeneration method, um, that is about fifteen people in the world that actually do that right now. Oh my gosh! So, <laughs> so yeah, so it, it's it's not real well known, not only with the general public but also practitioners. So anyway, the um the divine empowerment healing uh, is where we go through and find the emotions that are causing disease or uh, disharmony for a person, whether it be mental, physical, whatever, whatever level it is. And by specifying that particular emotion, if the, the client will focus on that emotion, regardless of what the cause of it was and um, or the scenarios or, or any of that, and then I, as a practitioner, go through and facilitate the clearing of that out of your, your body and your energy so that you no longer have those triggers for those emotions. Wow. Yeah, that's really interesting. So it's almost like um, because you're doing these practices, do you ever find that it has to be kind of different for different people, too? I know, I know that's something that happens in a lot of energy work, but have you noticed there's different ways of doing things for different people, um, but you still have your base structure. How does that kind of work for you? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Um, you have to go with where where the, the client is and what their needs are. And some people are able, they've done a lot of work prior to seeing me and they know exactly what it is that um, that they're having difficulty with. And we go right directly to it and they can go in very deep and we can clear clear down to the root. Um, and that can happen in one session and whatever ailment or problem that they were experiencing as a result of the, that emotion um, is, is gone in, in one sitting. Other people who either have not done as much work or are holding more tightly to those emotions and whatever caused that, that trauma, um, they may take multiple sessions or we may have to do other emotions that are kind of intertwined with it um, because of what they've experienced. So yeah, it's, it's always uh, very individualistic, especially because how it um, presents itself in the physical body is going to be different with each person too. For instance, for one person, it may have gone and completely developed to something like cancer, whereas other people, it may be more sort of in a, a liquid state to where it's not necessarily a tumor yet and and that's sort of one of the things that um that is a hallmark of this type of healing is that we use the different states of matter so when you think of something or you have an emotion then that's in a gas state and just like if you have a um a pot and you keep putting more and more gas in there eventually it's going to condense and start becoming a liquid and that's when you have something like uh, fibromyalgia, where it moves around in the body and you can't specify where you always have the, the same uh, energy problem, like a um, pain and that sort of thing, because it moves around the body because it's liquid. So once it, you continue to add more and more emotion into that same pot, which essentially is your physical body, where it's, you know, a, a trapped um, area, 
um, then it becomes a solid at some point when you keep feeding it. And wow. then that's when you get something like a tumor, which is very stationary and hard. So what we do with the divine wow. empowerment in healing is we go backwards. So we go from the solid to the liquid to the gas and release it. So a lot of people during their healing process, they may have tears that come out as they're getting rid of these emotions and so forth. And that's actually a very good thing because it's you're fine. directly releasing it as a liquid. You're not having to even go to the gaseous stage to, to release it. You're just directly releasing it as it is. See, that's that's awesome. I always uh, I always tell people it's okay to cry. It's okay if you need to use the restroom. Let it let it out. Let that energy out. Because you're right. I agree. Absolutely. Liquid is absolutely holding and storing energy. And I, I like what you said too. There's multi layers of this. It's not just the physical healing. Um, it's emotional healing too. So there's this interesting layered connection in this work you're doing too. Um, so I was going to ask you too. Is there any experiences that you've seen that you know like really stood out to you. I know that it's hard whenever you see a lot of people but you know if if there's anything that really stood out to you that you wanted to kind of share um well one of the first ones that I did which was really you know pretty dramatic was for a friend of mine who had been in Hurricane Katrina and it was I mean she was like right at the epicenter and so she had a lot of um, emotional trauma from that. In fact, every time that she heard a generator, she would be back in that situation. I mean, she had a lot of PTSD. Like from PTSD, that. yeah, of course. She couldn't even talk about it without getting emotional and having anxiety and, and everything come up. And yes. so, you know, we decided to do a session on that. And with one session, she no longer has that. And that's sort of where we know that we've done the work um, is because when you go back into a situation like that and and look at it, um, you know, it, it's just a memory and it doesn't trigger any of those emotions. You, you have calmness rather than having the emotion come up and your body reacting. So that's reaction. how we know when when those emotions and the um the trauma has been released because you feel calm, kind of like a placid lake where there's no ripples or anything. It's just a calmness. That's beautiful. Yeah. And I'll, I'll share too that. Um, I had a couple phobias come up and I worked with Aaron on some of these phobias and a couple different things as well. And yeah, there's this neut neutrality that I've never, <laughs> never had before because normally there's this like really quick reaction. You know how most yeah. fear state brings you into either you completely freeze or you have a quick reaction. I was quick reaction, um, yeah. for this particular one. And yeah, I, 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 there was one with claustrophobia on the plane and I was like, I'm not feeling claustrophobia. It's, it's quite interesting whenever you're like, wait, aren't I supposed to be scared right now? Or aren't I supposed right. to be feeling something? Cause it, we get so adjusted to that. So yeah, I will totally say that there's this, this neutrality. And I like what you said to the calmness of the, of the water in the lake, because that's a right. really good analogy and how it feels too. Absolutely. Yeah, so the you other can definitely tell when you have a, um, when you have something that's very triggering, because when you get in one of those situations or you recall that, you have a very physical response to it. And that tells you that there's something that you're holding in your body that is not supposed to be there. You know, not that you're not supposed to react when you have, you know, an emergency situation or something like that. But when you're not in that situation, you should not be having that response. Yeah, no, that makes complete sense. I think the other cool thing about Aaron is kind of your background in general. I know that you've done energy work for 25 plus years, but, and also, you know, you also have very, very strong psychic abilities too. So it's the combination of all, but you also have a really logical technical background too. So it makes you really unique to be an energy worker. So I just, I would love for you to tell me a little bit about that too. Yeah, I'm a, um, I'm actually a trained scientist. I've uh, got a master's degree in forensic sciences. So cool. And um, I actually worked in that field for nine years um, in a major city. And so I probably saw in one year, what a lot of the smaller communities were seeing in 10 years. So, um, so yeah, it was sort of a trial by fire with that as well. Um, but yeah, I've got a very scientific uh, background. And so I'm very logical, but I've also had, you know, many experiences throughout my entire life. So I've always been open to the spiritual side as well. So yeah, so I kind of come from both sides there. 
that balance. I like that. I'm into that. The other side of things too, is I was curious because just like with some of other practices and things that we do, you can study the practices and you don't have to be claircognate or in tune with anything. You can just trust and move forward with these practices. But I was just curious because you not only are studied in practices, but you also do use your, your knowing and your intuition as well. So how do you, how does that work with the work you're doing too? How do you, how do you get those affirmations and knowing that it's done and you know, whatever. Yeah, it's very interesting. Um, I can't necessarily speak for other practitioners because obviously everybody comes with their own <laughs> unique abilities and, and backgrounds. Uh, for me personally, um, a lot of my um, psychic ability is just the knowing. I just am given sort of the knowing and the information that I need, but I also have a lot of visual um, experiences. And especially with using the divine empowerment uh, technique, I feel a lot of what is going on in my own body. So I know when it's been released. Um, for instance, I had a client who had, um, he had had a lot of um, sort of abuse with not being able to breathe with um, people who like would sit on his chest so he couldn't breathe. And later in life, he actually developed um, asthma. And for me, that was a cue that there was something there that it's sort of the old, you know, um, the old axiom that uh, people say that, you know, spirit will, you know, hit you with a feather. And if you don't respond, then, you know, they'll throw a, a pebble at you and then a rock and then a brick. You know, to me, it was the same sort of thing where he had been given these experiences. And rather than doing something with it, he um, just developed more and more fear. Yeah. And then it, you know, eventually became asthma to where he had to look at it even closer. And so when we looked at it and we um, went through the the release process, almost immediately I had like a um, like a brownish cloud come up through my lungs and out. And I immediate, I mean, I could feel it and see it, but I also had you know the words come to me mustard gas. So it was trauma from a previous yeah, life previous in life. which he had been um, you know had experienced being gassed. And the the pain and suffering that was with that, he had carried it through. And then all the layers of that surfacing yeah. in his life too. And so that process, so with that unique circumstance, I know we had the conversation before about, um, you were talking about another practice, a practice that uses affirmations mm -hmm. and it takes a, a little bit of time and work. And I'm not saying this doesn't take time, but this is a faster method of some sort. I know you kind of told me that. Will you tell me a little bit more about the process? Yeah, it, it's somewhat similar to um, the way in a way I equate it because doing energy work is kind of nebulous in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And so it's hard to explain. And so one of the ways in which I try to explain it is that um, something like Louise Hay that people are very familiar with of having affirmations associated with illnesses um, that does work, but it's somewhat like a marathon where you have to do it for a long period of time and be very vigilant on it. Whereas this, we find the the emotion that um, that is very similar to, to what uh, Louise Hayes does. Um, we actually use a reference book called Metaphysical Anatomy by Yvette Rose. Um, it's like 800 pages versus like the 50 pages that Louise Hayes had. So it's very specific and covers much more than, than what she did. And that's to help us identify an actual um, emotion if someone doesn't know what the emotion is that is related to what they're dealing with. So um, so we use that and then going through and clearing the emotion itself um, is sort of like doing the 50 yard dash versus the, the marathon. So um, and obviously, you know, sometimes we need to go in, in layers and so different sessions if someone's not able to go super deep the initial time because it's very triggering to them. I mean, obviously, we're not trying to to um, overwhelm them with the emotion. If you can only do a small portion of it, then that's where we start. That's you the know? piece, yeah. It's all part of the piece. It's yep. beautiful. Thank you. I was gonna ask you too, is there um, anything else about divine empowerment or, oh, I, the energetic cellular part of it. I know they're a little bit separate. The energetic cellular, you're telling me about energy vitality. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? I really thought that was interesting. Right. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. The um <laughs> the energetic cellular regeneration is the highest level of the divine empowerment healing at this point. And what it does is it sort of piggybacks onto the um, emotional releases of the divine empowerment um, energy healing that we do. And what we're doing is we're actually raising the, the vitality and energy level in a person's physical body so that they're less susceptible to things like disease and, and um, aging and things. There's all kinds of things that people are starting to come out now with their experiences of having gone through this. Wow. Um, so for instance, the basis of this, of this whole um, technique is that when um, they can actually measure the cellular energy that you have in your body. And, and obviously these are, averages it's you know not one specific cell that you're looking at you're looking at a multitude so um so what happens is that during um conception you're at about 170 microvolts or minivolts sorry and then um and then once you're born you're at about 150 millivolts and then as you age and you have experiences and um you know uh things happen to you you slowly start to deteriorate in the amount of of vitality that you have so by the time that you're um uh like um can't remember off the top of my head but i think that when when you're like about 40 then you you have about 70 millivolts so it's decreased to that point and as you age and go further in, then you're decreasing more and more, which is why there's such a fall off when um, when you get to advanced age is because when you fall between when you fall lower than 30 millivolts, then you start getting into serious health issues because your body doesn't have the vitality to not allow them in your body. Wow. Is and it almost time. like uh, like the way I, I'm, I'm just curious the way I'm seeing it too, would it almost be like your not life force, but almost like a mirroring it's, kind of life force energy? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, it's a relationship there. Definitely. Wow. Yeah. That's, a, that's so cool. So have you seen anything where you can just share um, with this too? Have you noticed, have seen anyone or noticed anything or any of the stories about this, if their vitality increases, especially, you know, for, for those who have lost that vitality? Virtually everyone who has had this procedure uh, has seen an increase in vitality. I mean, that's sort of that's sort of like the least of it, but it's it's something that's across the board for everybody. Um, and in fact, I've I've experienced that myself with doing this because um, I have I about seven years ago I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, and one of the biggest problems that I had, and I live in the Arizona desert. So it gets hot. And one of the biggest problems I have is uh, not having any tolerance for heat. Yeah, and course. I would walk out the door during the summer and literally all of my energy would be sapped and I would be done for the day. And um, and so that's sort of one of the biggest benchmarks for me is is for that. And I noticed that this summer I didn't have any problem with that. I mean, it wasn't like it tapered off. I mean, it's, I can go out and work out in the sun and I don't have any, any fatigue problems now. Um, one of the, also the, the sort of things that I, um, uh, experienced and just sort of recognized lately is that, um, insect bites, I kind of found out this sort of roundabout, but evidently sort of a, a symptom or a sign of people who have autoimmune disease is they can't tolerate insect bites. And I didn't realize this because for the longest time, I just thought that I was different because I would get like a mosquito bite and it literally would be the size of a silver dollar. Wow. It would not be just like a little bump like most people got. I would get like a silver dollar and and um, I have a lot of ants here too. I would get ant bites and it, same thing, but they would actually last for two months or more um, and they would itch and hurt constantly. I mean, it's not like normal people where you have, you know, an insect bite, it itches for a few minutes and then it's gone. I mean, literally I would have stuff that would 
go for more than two months and it would be one wow. single bite. And your body's showing you that. And and it's interesting because our bodies show us that, but we don't actually know why it's happening either. Well, and I noticed this summer, we didn't have a, a lot of mosquitoes like right through July because I mean, it was like insanely hot here. It was like over 110 okay. every day. And I think even the mosquitoes got went away. But, um, but since they've uh, started coming back with a little bit cooler weather here, I get mosquito bites and sometimes I don't even realize it. I know yeah. that they're there because I can look at my skin and there's a slight um, sort of whitening of the skin of where the bites are. So I know I've got bites. They don't itch. They don't swell up. And I don't even notice them. It's like a benchmark for you. You know, we all have oh, our so different they're, benchmarks. I mean, they're completely gone. I mean, it's not like something I'm having to deal with on a daily basis for months anymore. I mean, it's it's not even recognized many times now. Wow. So that that's showing you on a physical level, which is a big deal. Yeah. If something's showing us on a phys on a on a mental and emotional level, it's beautiful when those changes start to happen. Right. But also on a physical level, when that starts yeah. to happen, it, it makes you. I know I know that we trust and all that, but it makes you believe again. You know, it makes yeah, it's, it exciting. It's, it's yeah, it, that's it exactly. It's very exciting to see these things happen because when you do um, the cellular regeneration, it's it's basically targeting where you need the energy the most so for someone like myself that has an autoimmune disease that you can't necessarily see what's going on it's nice to have something physical to where you know that it's definitely working you know even though you can't see something because for instance um some people they may be completely healthy and and young and so they don't have a lot of the physical issues physical yet. manifestations yeah. and so what they're seeing is their skin is getting younger looking and they're losing wrinkles and and uh sunspots and things like that um you know and so for them it's it's much more visual because that's what needs the energy at that that's what stands time. out to them yeah absolutely yeah. that makes sense um i actually had an in very interesting um experience additionally to this is that um i have two large dogs and here in in um arizona we have a problem with uh, valley fever and anytime that there's like construction it kind of kicks all the spores up and stuff and and so you get that i don't normally have that with my dogs except that they like to chase the ground squirrels and things like that and stick their nose in the ground so um so a couple of years ago um they had gotten valley fever and they tell you to use these pills and that you're they're gonna have to be on them for the rest of their lives well for me personally that's not what i do <laughs> so um so i had them on it for about a year to make sure that it was out of their system because they had really hacking cough um if you're not familiar with it they get like this really deep cough that sort of like they got something caught in their throat it's the way i equate it is is it's something similar to like a whooping cough for humans so you know when when they've got it it's not just a normal cough and um and so they had done that and i had them on it for about a year they were fine and they were good up until like about three weeks ago. And my um, my black lab, he started getting this cough. And I thought, oh no, let me just, you know, wait and kind of see how things go. He had it for a couple of days and it wasn't going away. And then my other dog had a little bit of a cough and I'm like, okay, I don't really don't want to go through this whole thing again. And then it sort of hit me with the cellular regeneration. Why don't I try that? So I did it on him. And literally, once I finished doing the process on them, they didn't cough. It was like it was like a switch had been done. My the black lab who was worse off, I think he coughed once or twice the next day, and that's mm -hmm. been it the entire time. They nothing since. That makes me so happy on so many levels too, because uh, animal energy work is so important. And in the side of things, I know you and I have this conversation quite a bit with the animal kingdom of uh, they're they're very open and receptive to that work too under the law of grace. So so it's really cool that you were also able to see it in a physical manifestation for someone you you care yeah. about. I mean your dogs. 
It was it was amazing how dramatic it was. I mean, it literally it was uh, like a, a a switch had been flipped. It was like that dramatic. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm 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 I love whenever techniques can be shifted and used for unique purposes and there's the unique purpose in itself in helping the animal kingdom too i was going to ask you so if someone was to come get a session with you how would they prepare i'm sure that you already talked to them about this stuff uh how long does it take you know those little those little things and i know it's different for everyone i right well <laughs> each, each session is 50 minutes long and we deal with this as much as um as we can pack into that so if someone's got multiple things going on and they've um, they're ready to release those, we might be able to get to all of them. Um, otherwise, we may have to do additional sessions to get to all of them, depending upon where each person is. Um, but yeah, it's it's uh, we do as much as possible, and and things are going faster and faster in the releases. Um, the the more people who are doing this and. Um, lending their energy to the the process, the faster the releases are going for everybody. Wow! And, and obviously, so cool. the the more people have done work on themselves to get to where they're ready to release it, um, the faster and easier it goes too. Yeah, and it sounds like too, um, this can get to the things that may have been really hard for them to release too. Some of those things that keep coming up as well. Those the the stubborn ones that it's like, why is this pattern coming up again? Because the patterns will come up until yeah. until it's released too. That's amazing. Well, and that's actually sort of a, a big part for for some people who don't know what the cause of their yeah why their, why is this coming up physical illness is, and um, by going through and really pinpointing what the the emotional trauma that they may or may not even remember um it that in and of itself is um very calming to their their mentally because they finally can sort of put a finger on what it is and have something to, can you to imagine that their, yeah i can their, imagine uh, that relief yeah 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 especially yeah, they, for those who are looking for an i mean i'm i think everything in balance but those who are looking for an alternative, uh, they haven't gotten their answers from some systems that maybe have been put in place. So now here's something that's offering that in a, in a different light in a different way. So that's exciting right. to see that come forward. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's more, um, the way I view it is, is it's more going to where the root is and pulling the roots out versus just, you know, continually cutting the grass you know you're actually going and, re and removing the roots of the grass so it doesn't grow the best analogies and continue you know yeah i call it the band-aid method yeah. versus the actual getting to the root of the the issue i agree 100 percent. that's awesome i would just like to say too is there anything else as you have the floor about um your practice practitioner space practice or anything that you want to bring forward today well one of the things that i'd um just so like to touch on is that I think that um, in my opinion, this is going to be the technique that everybody's going to use for themselves going in the future to where traditional medicine is probably not going to, to be like an everyday thing. It'll be for like broken bones and, and, you know, critical care, like Emergency that. stuff. Yeah. But this will be something that people can do anytime something pops up, then they do the process on themselves and they go on. And I found that th this worked personally for me um, in late April, um, I was involved in a car accident and I mean, it was a major car accident. Um, actually, let's see. This is what my car looked like. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's I mean, it took refined. out the whole back and actually damaged the frame. So it was a total. This was the guy who hit me. Oh. Yeah. And so, um, but I had been doing this work um, for a few months. And when it happened, I didn't have any emotional attachment to it. I didn't get angry and i mean it was a major accident i i could feel my head snap back and at the time i'm thinking okay i'm gonna have whiplash uh, my knee hit the the side of the door um i had chest pains from the seat belt catching me um uh, the front seat had actually collapsed not only backwards but it also folded in like a taco oh my god 
that was how hard it got hit. And um, but I didn't have emotional attachment to it. It was like, okay, well, this happened and let's move forward. It was an experience. And yeah. I didn't get angry. I didn't get upset. Um, and and it's funny because my friend who I called to to come and, and pick me up and take me home, um, she was upset much more than I was. And then all of a sudden she kind of like takes a step back and she's like, well, why am I upset if she's not upset? You yeah. know, but I, I literally walked away from that. And from that point on, I didn't even have one bruise. It didn't affect me in any way physically because I didn't give the emotion any anchor in my body. And oh, that's yeah. what I truly believe. And I think that that's what people will um gain value from and using this technique whether it's um you know on themselves by learning the technique or going to other practitioners is when you don't have those emotional triggers that you hold in your body there's no place for disease to to reside yeah so and, it's almost like yeah. because you were existing in that space because of the work you've been doing yeah. it almost reflected into different por parts and portions of your life that maybe before you had gratitude that you walked away versus before you know, yeah you don't who knows how you would have reacted right or, yeah, yeah yeah and it um and it just leaves you in 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 the present all the That's time it. and and you don't have the um the mental chatter that most people are familiar with. I mean, I don't have a lot of that anyways, but most people, once they have gone through um, even just one process of this, they find that a lot of that mental chatter is gone away. And a lot out. of those, that chatter that was in their brain, they realized was not them. It you know was what's interesting? I've been seeing that a lot. Yeah. yeah, that's something that's been coming up in session a lot is um, sword energy or air energy, where it's all up here and it's just like bouncing around so that's interesting that that's yeah. coming up in your sessions too because that's actually something i've noticed an uptake in too is the the chatter and the mental chatter of the emotions yeah. especially i mean there's oh, you and i've had this conversation before there's tons of planets in retrograde we're all trying to stay <laughs> present there's there's so much energy external but when you're in this space with with whether it's the vitality energy and when you're in this space yeah. and doing the work it, it's it's not as intense or louder you can separate it too right which yeah. is nice you should tell um only if you feel called to you should tell you told me something before we got on here you're telling me a little bit about the the cryon messages and the map you want to you want to share the oh, map story sure sure <laughs> it's, it's actually a book that um it's called uh the journey home and it is written um from a channeling with the entity known as cryon uh lee carroll is the is the one that uh, channels it and it's it's a book i think clear back from the the 90s um but uh, it's something that's i've always gotten something from every time that i read it and so i've read it numerous times and part of it is that um the the main character is given a map and it frustrates him because the only thing he can see is where he is on the map in about, you know, 20 feet, any direction. And he's frustrated because, you know, a map is supposed to tell you where you're supposed to go. And he's basically the message is, is that you only need to know where you're at and be in the present and make the decisions on what is right in front of you, not to be living in the, the future that may be, you know, 50 miles away because there's different paths to get there. And if you choose one now, then you're missing other ones that'll come on your path, depending upon what you're doing now. Yeah, I just thought that was perfect for <laughs> this now yep. moment. So thank you. <laughs> Is there anything else as I have you in this space that you'd like to you'd like to share about your practice at this time? Um, no, I think that we've covered most of uh, most of what I do. Yeah, it's just. So uh, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, so how to, how to, I'll, I'll be, I'll put your website, you know, okay. um, in your contact and all that, but is there any other way you want people to reach you or can people do consultations? Do you have any suggestions about that kind of stuff? Yeah, people can do consultations. Um, I do, uh, just, uh, uh, typical consultations of people who are having, um, maybe experiences that spiritual experiences and they, they don't understand them or yeah. they want to develop their spiritual, um, uh, uh, methods that they are coming across. Um, I do all of that of trying to help people understand as well as develop or 
Um, if somebody is having experiences and they don't know what to do with them and they don't really want them, I help them understand them and find ways of controlling them so that they're not intrusive in their life too. So, um, so yeah, I have just basic consultations for things like that. And then I also, um, I do uh, healing techniques, uh, mostly divine empowerment healing techniques I'm doing now. Um, I also do um, a variety of others because I've, throughout all the years, I've got all different kinds of modalities and, and things like that. But mostly I'm, I'm concentrating on the divine empowerment uh, healing just because it's so quick and effective. And uh, there's just so many results that are coming from it. So I'm mostly concentrating on that. And so, That's yeah, so people can uh, book time with me um, just uh, by going to my website. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Aaron. I appreciate it. And thank you for being here. Oh, thank you. Appreciate of course. it. <laughs> of course, I know. Thank you. <laughs> you rock. So we'll just say goodbye to everyone on the other side, having Aaron here with us. Thank you guys for listening. We really appreciate it. And go check out Aaron. I'll have everything linked down below. Okay. So bye, guys. Bye.